Hello, back again for the next installment of The Steps and my experience with The Steps. So we're on step four, part two this week. And step four, remember, is made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So last week we talked about the first three columns. Did you write them down? Because uh, you need to write them down. If you didn't write them down, go and write them down and then come back and watch this bit. Only joking, you, we can just talk about it. Number one, who upset you? It can be yourself, can be another person, can be an institution, can be a place. Now, column two, what did they do? Column three, what did it affect from those categories that were in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous? There's two schools of thought about four or five columns. Everyone has the fourth column. Column four is what was my part? That sounds weird, doesn't it? Because you immediately think, I didn't have any part in Mr. Jones not giving me the job, or I didn't have any part in me reliving a traumatic thing from my past that I didn't have anything to do with. You know, when I was beaten up at school by bullies, I didn't have any part in that. So how can I have a part in any of these resentments? And when I first did my step four, I was like, I didn't have any part in any of these. And my sponsor was like, now we've got to find your part. And I was really upset with him, thinking, you know, that's insensitive. Like, I, I didn't have a part in being bullied at school. I didn't have a part in not getting that job. I didn't have a part in that girlfriend leaving me. I didn't have a part in losing that apartment. But um, we'll see as we go along. There are things you can do to uncover, discover and discard. So the process of this is uncovering our part, discovering what we did and eventually discarding that character defect, they call it. My part is split up into four categories. Where have I been selfish, self-seeking, dishonest, or afraid? Selfish, self-seeking, dishonest, or afraid. I'm gonna take one of mine so we can go through them. So there's a, how can I put this? There's a certain channel on uh, online who take our ideas a lot. And I have resentment against these guys for what I perceive as doing our videos. Um, so we have a video and they do the same video two weeks later with a slight twist so we can't say anything. We make some merch, they make very similar merch, not as good, with a little twist. See how resentful I am? With a little twist so that we can't say you've stolen our idea, but it's very close and it happens a lot. So they're constantly coming up for me in my step four, this one page. Um, so who are they? I can't say really, because that's not fair, but beep. What did they do? Stole our video ideas. What did it affect? Self-esteem. Yeah, does it affect my self-esteem? So you really have to think about some of these. I don't think it does affect my self-esteem because I know that we made the video first. So I don't feel less than because we had the idea. Pride, yeah, it affects my pride. I feel like you get proud of a piece of work and someone does the same thing and so you're very protective. And so it does affect my pride. Ambition, yeah, it affects my ambition because I'm like, some people are gonna see that and not realize that we did it first. Actually, Laura's not so bad at this. I'm terrible about this. I will hold on to this, <laughs> these things. So yeah, it affects my ambition. Security, I don't think it affects my security. It affects my peace of mind, which does affect my feeling of security, I guess. Personal relations, definitely, because I can't stand them. And uh, this is pretty vulnerable to talk about. Normally I keep this stuff to myself, but I want us to go through this together. So it affects my personal relations. And uh, you know, I don't want to run into them. I've run into them before and they seem nice, but now I'm like, I'm obsessed about not liking them. So that they're living rent free in my head. Like we said before, living rent free. They don't know I'm upset with them. I, and, but they're living in there rent free. Sex relations. No, it doesn't affect my sex relations. Although I might be so upset that I may not be taking care of my home life, which may affect sex relations. Pocketbook. It may do because uh, videos are monetized and they might hit a certain 
a group of people with our idea and then they may not watch our video. So yeah, it does affect the pocketbook. So beep, stealing ideas, it affects my pride, ambition, personal relations and pocketbook. Here's the tricky bit. What's my part in that? <sighs> so immediately I go, I don't have a part in that. They're stealing our stuff, I don't have a part. So a really good trick to uncover my part. Remember, we want to uncover, discover, and discard the character part of me that's making me feel these resentments. So a good way to find my part is to break it up again into four things. Have I been selfish, self-seeking, dishonest, or afraid? So those are the things we'll apply to this situation to see what my part is. So. Was I selfish? Yes, I'm thinking about myself. This resentment is me thinking about myself and being hard done by. I've been selfish. So the difference between selfish and self-seeking, apparently, I was talking to Laura about this yesterday. Selfish is when I'm thinking about myself and self-seeking is when you want others to think about you. So I've been selfish because I'm thinking about myself, thinking about our ideas and my video, it's all about me. Self-seeking, I want other people to think about me. I want other people to look at the video and go, oh, that's so great, they're so great, or I'm so great for coming up with that idea, for completely self-seeking. Those are two big parts I have in this resentment, and they're both self-related. It's both it's me, 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 me. All the time I'm thinking about me, I get depressed, and I get anxious. That's what happens when I th I'm in myself. Uh, dishonest. Now, with dishonest, I went to a brain doctor this week and he told me an amazing thing. It's the same guy that looked at Laura, he did an assessment on me. It's actually pretty amazing because I did not expect what he said. This is mental, what he said. <sighs> so I'm not going to go into that. We'll make a video about that. He said to ask myself, is it true? Is it really true? So do I know for a fact that they ripped us off? Yeah, I think I do. Is it really true? Do I definitely know for a fact that they ripped us off? I want to say no, and I want to think of, a, you know, a get out, but I think I'm pretty certain that it is true. But I could say maybe it's not them, maybe it's a writer they have, maybe it's a producer, it's them. Um, but, you know, is it definitely true? It is definitely true. So. I haven't been dishonest, but basically you need to ask yourself if you're resentful about something, is my feeling true? Is it really true? Like really search, is it really true? And if it's not, you've been dishonest with yourself and you're rubbing yourself of your own peace of mind. You're ripping yourself off of peace of mind because they may be ripping us off, but I may be ripping myself off by obsessing about it. But in this case, I think it's true. So I haven't really been dishonest. So I've been selfish, I've been self-seeking, I haven't been dishonest. The fourth one is afraid. Now that's a big one for this whole thing of addiction. My first sponsor, John, said all addiction, food, shopping, sex, drugs, alcohol, technology, everything, it's all fear. It's all based in fear. And the big book says our very existence is shot through with fear. And it's... It's really true for me. Fear is all about fear. Addiction is all about fear. And we'll see why in coming videos. So have I been afraid? Yes, big time. I've been living in limited thought. I've been thinking, if they do this idea and we do this idea, they're taking stuff and it's making me feel scared. And there's a lack, there's a lack mentality there. There's not enough to go around. If they have a successful video, then means that we don't have a success, as successful a video as we would have had. So it's lack mentality. It's thinking in lack and that's fear. How big is your God? So that's something Laura says a lot. If God is small enough to make things be lacking, is it a big enough God for you to be reliant on? Is it a big enough higher power? How big do you want your God to be? I want my God, my higher power, to be big enough for everything to be inclusive and not to be limited by someone else's actions. So if I really trust my higher power, there's no lack. I've been selfish, self-seeking and afraid. That's my part. See, so I did have a part. 
So you think someone's stolen something from me. I don't have a part in that. I didn't do it. But I do have a part, actually. It's my part is holding on to it. My, my part is obsessing about it. Try this with a couple of yours. Look at the first three columns and the fourth column say, and you've got to be really fearless and searching, which means you can't leave anything out. You've got to really think, really dig deep. This is what I was talking about in the first and second steps. This is where people dig deep and this is where people find it hard to stay in the 12 steps because this is the first time you've really got to search. Really dig deep. Do I have a part? Was I selfish, self-seeking, dishonest or afraid in, in any of these things you have in one, two and three? So take someone from your one, two and three and apply this. Have I been selfish? Have I been thinking about me? Have I been self-seeking? Have I been wanting other people to think about me? Have I been dishonest? And dishonest means, is it true? Is it really definitely true? And uh, you really have to think, is, the, is, there, is this 100% true? Most of the time, it isn't, in my opinion, in my experience. And afraid. Most resentment, all of my resentments have fear attached, all of them. Every single one. I haven't had a resentment that I haven't had to tick the afraid box. And that's my part. Being afraid, living in fear over this resentment is my part. Sometimes our part is just holding on to something that happened to us. And that's fear. That's fear that's keeping us holding on to that thing. They say in AA, resentments are our number one offender. And resentments are the number one thing that makes addicts use again. So you've got to be very careful around this stuff. That's column four. My first sponsor, we did four columns for step four. I got sober for 10 years from his way of doing the program. So this definitely works for. Some people do a fifth column, which is what is a better way, I guess, because... It's just nice to be able to see a better way. So in, let's do the fifth for this resentment of mine. These creators stole video ideas. It affected my pride, ambition, personal relations, pocketbook. I have been self-seeking, selfish and afraid. That's my part. What would be a better way? Well, what would be a better way of this is to stay in my own lane not to look at other people's content. Just concentrate on what I'm doing. Trust in my higher power more. Don't try and control them. I'm terrible at obsessing. If something is in my head, I'll obsess on it. It's a trait of alcohol addiction, obsessive compulsive thinking. Apparently addiction is like that with OCD. They're very linked. Most addicts are obsessive compulsive in their thinking. And for me now, it's not about drinking, it's about thinking. 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 Thinking, thinking. Do you like my shirt? Um, it's apt. So, those, that's a better way. Stay in my own lane. Trust God. And try to not obsess. Try to talk to someone about it. And that's a way to get out of obsession. I'm terrible at that as well. Pick up a phone. I'm having obsessive thoughts to another addict. That's what I do when I do it, which isn't very often, and I need to get better, and I need you guys to hold me accountable for that. I'm going to ask you guys to help me as well, because you're helping me stay sober. These videos that I'm doing with you is like a meeting for me, so thank you. So yeah, those that's the ways it could be better. So that's, that's five columns. Um, what I'd suggest is if you're going to meetings and you have a sponsor, do it their way. If they do four columns, do four. If they do five, do five. I've done both ways. They both worked. That's step four. Um, and well done if you did step four. And if you didn't do step four, go and do step four. Go and do step four. Don't look at step five before you've done step four. Don't you look at step five before you've done step four. Don't you look at step five before you've done step four. And don't you look at step four before you've done step three. And don't you look at step three before you've done step two. And don't you look at step two before you've done step one. The steps come in order for a reason. I'll stop this stupid singing now. Questions. Remember to tweet me, Stephen Hilton, with a PH. 23. That's my Twitter handle. Tweet me the questions because I like to read them all in one place. C. Bonilla says, why don't you start a Zoom meeting? I'm sure you'd have a lot of people you could help. Um, there are Zoom meetings. I feel like it's good to speak to people that are more knowledgeable than me. I try to go to them and I think it's good to get a variety of different stories. But it is worth thinking about. 
I mean, maybe I should do that. I don't know. I don't know if that's... Is that ego, though? It, to me, like, oh, I'm going to set up a meeting. Is that egotistical? Because you've got to... As an addict, you've got to watch ego because ego is another one that can take you out. But maybe... I don't know. That's a hard one. Good question. Um, I feel like my ego says, yeah, start a meeting. Be, 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 it's all about me, me, me. And my recovery says, just direct people to AA meetings. So maybe just do that for now. Um, AA or NA, Zoom, just look at it online. Uh, look it up. Um, you can just join them. It's like this, very similar to this. So I feel like it's a good jump from this to a Zoom meeting. It might be a big jump from this to a in-person meeting, but now everything's online, try it. Um, and good luck. Do you think I should start a meeting? Mm, I'm going to have to check in with my sponsor. <sighs> I've had a terrible time with sponsors recently. I've had some great sponsors who have got me sober. But since the pandemic hit, I just haven't been, I haven't been calling people. So... You know, I'm not perfect at this either. And that's why this is helping me. Speaking to you guys every week has really put me on a good track. So I really want to say thank you for being there and watching these. Or me just talking to you is, is really helping me with, with my program. So you have been a huge part in my sobriety since I've been doing these. So thank you. I was going to read out another question, but I just think I wanted to say thank you to everyone for supporting these videos. It really means uh, really means a lot to me. And um, you guys are the best. And I really do love you. And I do wish you the best. If you're struggling with brothers, you know, or sisters. If Well, I'm a man, so how does that work? We're siblings of sobriety. That doesn't sound very good. Anyway, um, I love you guys. Next week I will do two like I have been doing, but I just this week wanted to say thank you. you. You're doing great. And I know we can do this together. Tweet me questions. Stephen Hilton, PH. At Stephen Hilton. I'm so old. At Stephen Hilton 23. Tweet me there your questions and I'll get to learn technology before next week. Love you. Bye.